Hello and welcome to this repair tutorial and today we're going to look at a Marantz PM5005. I'm starting to see these amplifiers appear in the workshop on quite a regular basis now and more often than not it has a common issue which I'll come to in a moment. So general specifications you're looking at 4, 45 watts times 2 8 ohm speaker loads and this increases to 50 watts per channel if you connect 4 ohm speakers and this is RMS power output over the range of 20 Hz to 20 kHz with both channels operation and then total harmonic distortion with an 8 ohm speaker load is at 0.05% which is good and then for the input sensitivity for the moving magnet because there's a direct connection here for a turntable no pre-amplifier or equalizer required uh, input signal range is at 2.2 millivolts with a input impedance of 47 kilo ohms and then for all of the other inputs so that's your CD tuner network record 1 record 2 they're all at 200 millivolts 20k ohm input impedance and weight is 6.7 kilograms and dimensions height of 105 width of 440 and a depth of 370 millimeters now when you look from the amplifier front fascia nice clean layout I would also say um, a nice looking amplifier and full remote control that you receive with the unit and you can see also that there is a headphone jack so for personal listening and you have the option of course to select speaker set 1 or speaker set 2 from the front fascia with the illuminated push buttons or no speakers and then input selection is via rotary encoder and you have a blue LED which will illuminate depending on which input you choose and then you have individual uh, controls for your balance, bass, treble etc and then you also can uh, select direct mode so this is bypassing the tone control circuits as well as uh, loudness selection as well now the fault with this amplifier as I said is very common so the issue was that you had no audio output either on headphones or on speakers for the right channel and the reason for that is that the right hand gang within the 50k a volume control part which is motorized was open circuit so to remove the volume control board when you look from the rear it plugs in via a multi-pin connector but what you have to do and I'm showing this is that you have to remove the the volume control knob just pull it and then behind there you will see two fixing screws and these are self tappers and then just remove them you'll also need to remove the power connectors to the amp board and that's both the low voltage power supply and main supply and then also as well ensure that you disconnect the interconnecting cables from the volume control PCB to the main amp board and the reason for that is that when you do some measurements which I'll describe in a moment you don't want to have any influence from any other components from the additional circuitry so you could attempt to try and measure the different resistance tracks on the multi pins on the, from the solder side of the board it's a little bit cumbersome so the best thing to do is when you look from the front face from the front of the board or some sorry from the top of the board you can see two resistors there is R5003 and then you can also see R5004 and these are 56k ohm resistors now what you would do is of course ensure that there's no power connected to the amplifier no input signal etc and then set your meter then to resistance and you just want to measure across the resistor so if I did 5003 first off I rotate the volume control down to minimum and then I should read probably about 5 to about 6 k ohms a nominal resistance I'm not looking for an absolute value here I'm just looking for a change in resistance and then as I rotate the volume control potentiometer clockwise it should in theory increase the uh, volume if it was working and again I'm looking for a change in resistance across R5003 and it should level out at about 48 kilograms or thereabouts now that's all I want to know I just want to know is it changing is it not and for the for this measurement it was changing so that told me one gang was working which I knew because the left channel was fine but then when I move over to R5004 repeat the same step it remained permanently high at about 48k ohms so that tells me that the gang is open circuit so relatively straightforward to replace it what you'll see is that there are solder lugs 
for the supply voltage for the motor and then you then have the multi-pin connector and there's also two additional sort of uh, mounting lugs as well so once you've desoldered that it's not a double-sided board as you see so very easy just get maybe a flat blade screwdriver just ensure all solder has been removed and then just lift it up and then in the description of this video I also provide for you the part number for the replacement volume control potentiometer it is actually the same one that is used on the DM Oh, sorry, on the Denim PMA 520AE and then the 720AE, so they're fully interchangeable. So once that was done, I can again do the uh, measurement across R5004, and sure enough, the resistance was changing as I expected, and it was the same as R5003. That effectively fixing the volume control issue and the loss of audio then on the right channel. Now, what I also show in the video after the repair of the volume part the next thing to do is to verify you know what's the bias and you may say well why are you checking that you know you didn't do any work on the output stage or driver stage of the amp or even the power supply so why do you want to go off and check that well the reason being is that based on experience what you find for whatever reason the bias on this amplifier and or these amplifiers is always very very high and it's way off so when you look at the service manual, it refers to the initial setting that you would then set the uh, bias trimmer. So there's V6001 and V6002, which you can see on the main board. Um, within two minutes of power up, you would set that to initial value of 10 millivolts. And then after, once the amplifier has warmed it to about six minutes, as they deem, or longer, you would then do the adjustment then for it to read 20 millivolts. Now what I show is the initial value before adjustment and you can see that the bias on the respective channel is reading 58.40 millivolts so that's very high and that's with no input signal or anything connected to it so over a period of time you know if that drifted up even higher the amount of current flowing through there will probably be sufficient then to uh, damage or cause an output failure so two adjustments to be made now on the other channel it wasn't as high as 58 millivolts but it was close all right so again that's why that adjustment was made and then the next thing that you need to check is just the DC offset and that's very straightforward so it's only a case of connecting your multimeter across the rear speaker terminals just ensure that you've selected the appropriate speaker set system 1 or system 2 you know because that will then energize the internal protection relays which connect across the rear terminals and then it was slightly high about 11 12 millivolts for each channel and what I'm doing here is I'm just adjusting this back to factory specifications so they will quote 0 millivolts with a tolerance of plus or minus 3 millivolts and once that was done then we know that the alignment is correct both for DC offset and then for the output bias uh, just as a note and you see that in the video you can also see that on the board are two test connectors so it's very easy just to insert your multimeter leads or probe leads into there to measure the millivolts directly then you don't have to try and connect for example across emitter resistors effectively that's what that test connector is doing so really not a complex repair but um, you know it does give you some insight with regard to the bias adjustment and then also for the DC offset and uh, if you get this particular fault come in uh, what I also show as well just is like a two-stage operation so what I'm doing is I just use an audio signal tracer just to verify that the signal is present on the multi-pin connector which is effectively the output then from the input selection IC and then what I then do is I'm then checking on the multi-pin connector where it connects from the volume control board back to the main amplifier board so what I'm doing is I'm just eliminating any issue with the input selection and there wasn't any and then what I'm then doing is verifying that yes, the fault really could be the volume control potentiometer, maybe, in this case it was, but sometimes it may not. You may have an issue on the tone control stroke micro board, but for this repair that was not the case. So as always, I really appreciate you stopping by and listening to this repair tutorial. And again, if you have any questions or you need any support repairing any amplifier that you have yourself, by all means, email audioamplifierservicing at AOL.com. 
and I'll be very happy then to respond back to you and provide any guidance or support that you may need. Until the next time, cheers and bye-bye.